CataractCoach.com, setting reasonable patient expectations. This is such an important topic. It's Sunday night, about seven of the evening, just kind of winding down, preparing for surgery tomorrow. I like to go through the list of the patients that I have for tomorrow, kind of go through each one, one by one, remind myself, is there something unusual with the case? which lens we're selecting, what our kind of refractive outcome or goal is, and also to double check and make sure that the patient understands and has reasonable expectations for the outcome of surgery. Now, one of the challenges here is explaining to patients what their potential vision is going to be like. Now, correcting refractive error is one thing, but what if we're changing it for a patient, taking them from, let's say, a little bit of low myopia to far distance vision? What if we're putting in an extended depth of focus lens or even a trifocal lens? Is the patient on board with the concept of the vision that we're gonna give them? Now, one of the challenges that we have is that patients are expecting youthful vision. And that means accommodation. We don't have that. So think about youthful vision, right? Let's say the same number of photons enter your eye, but with youthful vision, You've got your accommodating crystal lens that can shift the vision near, intermediate, far, anything you want. But the same number of photons that enters the eyes all change at once. Now patients with a distance, let's say monofocal lens, we aim for distance, they've got all those photons going for that distance vision. Let's say from one meter to far, far distance. And then reading glasses will shift all those photons intermediate or near. So of course that's great quality of vision it's unfortunately, though, reliant on reading glasses. So when we get to a lens like an extended depth of focus lens, all right, we do elongate that focal range, but the number of photons entering the eye is the same. All we're doing is redistributing those photons over a wider range. And that means we've got to take a little bit of the image quality get some of those photons, let's say from far distance, to increase that intermediate zone. And for trifocal, of the 100% of photons that are on the eye, well, right off the bat, some of the photons are lost because of the nature of the diffractive rings. And then we split up the remaining light into distance, intermediate, and near. Well, it's obviously not going to perform as well as a young, youthful, accommodating lens that can instantly shift on the fly and have 100% of photons at all ranges just by virtue of accommodating. So setting these appropriate expectations for patient is not easy. And you and I as ophthalmologists, we can understand these very detailed concepts and understand the optics that are involved. But a lot of times patients don't have that background in the physics of optics. And so we've got to explain it to them. Now, what's helpful in a cataract patient are those patients who have significant lens opacities to begin with. If they're starting off where more than half the photons at the end of the eye are being refracted or deflected or blocked by their lens opacities, well, now it makes life a lot easier because whatever we give them, any type of eye well, is going to be a huge improvement for them. But the danger are the patients who have very mild or moderate lens opacities. If the cataract's not that bad. You gotta make sure, you're asking yourself, is the vision you're gonna give the patient post-op better than they have now? And it's not always easy to meet or exceed those patient expectations. So a couple things I like to explain to patients. First, I look out for the two warning signs. One is minimal cataracts or mild cataracts. Second is the low myopes. You see that lens power and it says, oh, patient's gonna get an 18 and a half diopter lens for Plano. Whoa, 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 think about it. That patient's probably a minus one or a minus two myope, right? You know that because the lens power is in the high teens. If you make them absolutely Plano, patient may not understand that they're gonna lose permanently that uncorrected or unaided near vision. And you've heard the patients come to you and say, doctor, listen, my near vision's great because I'm a minus two. Just fix my far vision. And you laugh to yourself and say, gosh, I, I only wish I could. So those are the two warning signs, those two patients, minimal cataracts and the low myopes. And then there's another one that's kind of a, a, a similar to that, which is the patient who's a 
patient is a plano presbyope, and now you're gonna do a refractive lens exchange with a trifocal lens. Mm. They don't have any issues now. Their lenses are clear. They're just plano for distance. They just don't have the near. They got the presbyopia. And you're gonna be splitting up their life and they're not gonna be entirely happy unless you set appropriate expectations. So some things I say, listen, I can make your eyes much better, but there's no way of turning your 60 year old eyes into the same eyes you have when you were 25 years old. Youth is wasted on young people, the saying goes, and I don't have a way of turning back that clock for you. Another thing to do for the patients, they come in and they'll say, well, you know, you did my eyes and this one's a little sharper than, hey, listen, first quit doing that because it prevents the brain from sinking the images, right? Let the brain get the benefit of stereoscopic vision by using both eyes together. Second thing is remember, the eyes are sisters, not identical twins. You see it when you do the lens calcs, right? One eye calcs out to using a 20 dot lens for perfect plano. The other eye calcs out for a 20 dot lens to give you a post-op result of minus 0.3. So they're not equal to begin with, and like shoe size, their IOLs only come in half diopter steps. But of course, half diopter in the IOL is probably about a third of diopter at the refractive plane. Anyway, just some evening thoughts here on a Sunday before I kind of wind down and get to bed. I have to sleep early. Got to wake up at 4 a.m. Got to be in the surgery center by about 5.15. And I got to be cutting that first patient at 6 a.m. sharp. So keep this in mind. Set reasonable expectations for your patients. And watch out for those two mornings, right? You remember the patients? The low myope. And the one that has really minimal or moderate cataracts and not much neutral opacity. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website, too cataractcoach.com you'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos and if you sign up for a free daily email we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free come on cataractcoach.com check it out